Hi everyone, welcome to Boots on the Ground, leveraging practitioner perspectives on open education in New England. In this session, I'll share the backbone of the New England Board of Higher Education, better known as NEBI, its communication strategy that it employs to help bridge gaps between our regional practitioners and key stakeholders. My name is Lindsay Gum, and I serve as NEBI's Fellow for Open Education. NEBI is one of four regional education compacts in the United States that engages policymakers in the six New England states, working in partnership with governors and their education advisors, regional industries, legislators, and post-secondary leaders of public and independent colleges and universities. In New England, 61% of institutions of higher ed are private, which is significantly higher than the rest of the United States. We often celebrate stories of how state funding and public institutions have made progress in advancing the adoption of OER and open practices. However, we don't hear as much about the good work being done at private institutions that also enroll students who struggle to afford their learning materials. Our Practitioner Perspective series intentionally includes a balance of public, private, institutions to help gain the attention of senior leadership in obtaining sustainable funds and infrastructure for open efforts and programming. NEBI launched its Open Education Initiative in 2019 to assist in and build upon coordinated state strategies, enhance and promote effective policy frameworks, and share best practices to ultimately accelerate the integration of open education and open educational resources in the Northeast. We formed an Open Education Advisory Committee in the fall of 2019, comprised of regional leaders, practitioners, and advocates from the six New England states, New York, and New Jersey. Our committee met in person in our Boston office for the first time in January 2020 for an all-day retreat and carefully crafted a curated set of priorities for NEBI to focus on that would help bridge the ex existing gaps in support. So you can see here, this is a chart of the priorities um, that our advisory committee helped us develop. And they represent policy development, leadership awareness and engagement, and practitioner support. So for policy development, we're looking at the exploration and development of resources and research to inform sound policy making practices for OER state legislation, as well as system and institutional policies bridging the gap between practitioners and key decision makers. For leadership awareness and engage engagement, we're looking at communication strategies and tools to assist constituents in understanding and articulating the full value and commitment that open education entails in terms of advancing affordability, equity, and pedagogy in the Northeast. And finally, the area of practitioner support, which encompasses resources to support practitioners in the Northeast when considering the practical realities of OER adoption, revision, and creation, and open pedagogy. So in having these conversations with our advisory committee, um, many of them express that it's very difficult to share and articulate the value of the work they're doing with key leadership. So this disconnect is a significant contributing factor to issues of sustainability that pr practitioners also encounter with their open education efforts. And so we decided to take this feedback and gather a diverse set of practitioner perspectives that we could share out with our constituents in our publication, the New England Journal of Higher Education. So as I mentioned before, practitioners wishing to leverage their experiences in progress as the boots on the ground advocates in open education often find it really difficult to gain access to engage in meaningful dialogue with key leadership. And so to help facilitate these connections and highlight its regional practitioners, NEBI developed a series called Practitioner Perspectives that aims to help stakeholders contextualize the potential value of funding and supporting such grassroots efforts. And so really the audience for these pieces are the key leadership and stakeholders, but they're also of extreme value to other practitioners and to the open education community in general. So pictured here are four of our um, open education advisory committee members from New England. 
and we decided to tap into their expertise and knowledge for our first series um, for the practitioner perspectives. So pictured here is Kevin Corcoran, who is the Executive Director of Digital Learning at the Connecticut State College and University System. And Kevin contributed a piece on no cost and low cost course designators. So when students register for courses, um, they know ahead of time which courses use OER or low cost materials. Next, we have Thomas Edwards, who is the provost at Thomas College up in Maine. And Tom wrote a wonderful piece on how he has been leading the charge with OER at, at his university, working with his faculty and obtaining a three-year Davis grant um, to convert over 30 courses um, to OER. Next is Heather Maselli. Heather is an adjunct faculty member at Roger Williams University in Rhode Island. And Heather uses OER enabled pedagogy in her general education science course. And finally, we have Robin DeRosa, who is the director of open learning and teaching collaborative at Plymouth State University. And Robin contributed a wonderful piece on OER and a call for equity. She touched a lot on issues of public health and dismantling systemic racism and how OER really can play an important role here and really should. And last but not least, um, we just recently released a post on the Rhode Island Steering Committee for Open Textbooks, um, and we interviewed Dragan Gill who is a reference librarian at Rhode Island College, and Daniela Fairchild, who is the director of the Rhode Island Office of Innovation. And um, the two of them talked about the lessons learned and um, hopes for the future on open education in Rhode Island as they are entering their fifth year of um, a five-year challenge, which was given by their governor to save uh, students $5 million in five years using um, just OER. Um, so a piece like this is really beneficial for state legislators and other senior leaders to hear firsthand accounts of these kinds of initiatives to take a framework that has worked in one state and adapt it for their own. And if we just go back for a moment to the screen, um, I just want to reiterate how we are trying really hard to highlight and showcase and leverage the voices of various um, individuals doing the work on the ground. So, for example, it's really powerful to hear a provost of an independent institution who is actually leading this effort, who applied for a grant, who's there with his faculty, encouraging them, supporting them, bringing in folks to educate them and provide professional development. If another senior leader at a different institution sees that example, um, they're far more likely to feel that it is legitimate and normalized and um, support their own practitioners at their institution um, if they request funding. And likewise, um, we chose to highlight an adjunct faculty member who has had great success at her institution and uh, wonderful support from her provost and administration, from her dean, um, in doing this work with students. And that's, you know, oftentimes adjunct faculty are really interested in OER and open pedagogy, um, but it is a risk for them. Um, they are contingent faculty and that's a risk that they have to way and so if we can showcase an example that has worked really well and has been supported by administration um, it just kind of helps move the needle in the right direction for others and so as we wrap out um, if you're interested in learning more about nebby's open education efforts um, we really encourage you to visit our website nebby.org open education you can learn more about our practitioner perspective series um, that is published in the New England Journal of Higher Education. And if you feel like you have your own boots on the ground story to share with us, we would love to hear from you. And I encourage you to reach out to me at lgum at or you can give me a call. 
So thank you so much for listening to our lightning talk and be well.